In this episode of Accelerator TV, we catch up with rapper Bun B in his native Texas at the South by Southwest Music Festival. Last December, Bun B was dealt a serious blow when his longtime collaborator Pimp C died. Here he talks about being an elder statesman of hip hop, surviving in the music industry, and why small towns matter. Now that gangsta. Message gets you down. Then I cc'd every girl that I'd cc round town. In Atlanta, sipping on syrup and breaking the screw. We slap swinging, coming down and through. I thought you knew. See the piece of change. You see the pinky ring. Man, this one ain't a joke, and this one ain't a game. You got. I've had some unease, you know, with accepting the title. But you know, everybody gets old. Everybody has to grow into who they are. And there's a lot of things that they could be calling me at this stage in my career. They could be like the old guy that won't leave. You know. But um, or that kind of thing. So, if uh, elder statesman, um, um, it kind of, um, I guess, denotates some kind of respect. I'll take that. And a lot of times, more than anything, I, I extend myself for advice and tutelage for people because there was only like like Scarface, Too Short, um, Jay Prince. There was only like three or four people that I could really call. And I know it's a lot of different things. Like sometimes. Um, the art doesn't mesh with the business. Sometimes the business doesn't mesh with life. Sometimes the art doesn't mesh with life. There's a lot of different problems and issues that come up with different people. And sometimes they don't know who to talk to about that kind of stuff. So I kind of make myself available for, for people for that kind of thing. What's up, A-Town, Texas? My name is Brent B. I represent the mighty motherfucking UGK. R.I.P. to my motherfucking brother, Tim C. It is UGK for motherfucking life, nigga. Well, it's the king, got a drill a top butter. Line, my paint is on drip. My ribs is on shine. My bumper kit recline. Cherry yolk is grip. We switch the sweet stuff. Blow with purple rain to sip. I straight up off the rip. I'm letting boys know. I never been a bitch. Don't plan to be a hoe. So if you got some flex, you better keep it low. I'll bring it to you. Just soon as you hit the dough. Well, music, of course, is usually, you know, for the young people. Music is for the young and the old. It's, it's not for the middle aged, unfortunately. Um, we're the ones that have difficulty mapping out, etching where we are, because we don't want to seem too old too soon. We don't want to seem too young too long. You know, and this is just not the cycle of music, but also within the cycle of life. No one's going to be in everyone's favor forever. You know what I'm saying? So when you know that you're not in everyone's favor, or it's a, your time is coming, to, you know, it's time for someone else to be in everyone's favor, it's a lot better for everyone if you just bow out gracefully than if they have to call security and have you escorted from the industry type of thing. So my thing is just to have your, you know, have your radar on, you know what I'm saying, and really have a really good sense of what's coming. Try to stay tied into the scene as much as possible. And, um, you know, when you see what's getting ready to come, you know, fall back, acknowledge that they're the next, and see if they may want to work with you. They may have a lot of respect for you, but if you don't respect the fact that it's someone else's time, then they may not, they may lose all the respect that they had for you. So when I see the up and coming talent, I not only acknowledge that, they're next up, but I'm like, you know, hey, and if you want to do something with me, let me know. Like that, so just be easy, nigga. Cause you know you ain't about no drama. And you know that you really don't want it. So stay the fuck out the way when them drill ass niggas is on it. Dizzy Rez and UGK, you know we stay connected. Drill recognize the drill, so just respect it and check it and tell me. Where's the G's? Where's the stars? Where's the whips? Where's the cars? Where's the crips? And where's the yards? Cause all I see is I wouldn't recommend anyone's children going into line of work. I'm going. I'm in right now. This this music is um, the music industry is a very very um, very cutthroat industry. And when I say it's cutthroat, um, at the at the end of the day, it's about money. You know what I'm saying? The mute the business of music is about money. It's not the art of music. So 
if you get into it and you start from a business standpoint, then you have to be well aware of what, what you are as a business and you better have some kind of business acumen. And uh, if you're coming from the art standpoint, just try to keep it as free as possible. You know what I'm saying? Once you get into selling music and selling yourself, then you're going to you're gonna come to a place of compromise as a person. And you got to be real careful with yourself. Because um, people think it's always money, but power you know, comes from a lot of different places. Some people just want acknowledgement. And when you go everywhere every day and people are acknowledging you, even if you're not getting paid from it, you can get big head, you know? So it's just really about being in a stable place as possibly as you, as you possibly can before you come into it and knowing exactly what you want. If you come into it to get paid, then you're a businessman first and an artist second. If you come into it to express yourself, then you're an artist first and a business person second. And I suggest that whatever angle you're coming from, think with your first mind. Jay Prince told me, no matter what happened, but be keep on pushing. All my real G's gotta keep on pushing. My niggas in the streets gotta keep on pushing. And all my real thugs gotta keep on pushing. Whether rappers slaying drugs, nigga, keep on pushing. Now all my real G's gotta keep on pushing. My niggas in the streets gotta keep on pushing. And all my real thugs gotta keep on pushing. Whether rappers slaying drugs, hold on. Well, it's the king of the hover train. The song to the snow, they call me Mr. Kilogram in case your ass ain't no. no. On the boss, ball or blow when you come to the go. Of the cats holding some weight, but they ain't holding enough. I've probably done, say in 90, 1993, I probably did 20 out of 52 weeks performing in Lafayette, Louisiana. Just these towns that show so much love. Towns like Monroe, Louisiana, which is right on the outside of Jim, Louisiana. Towns like uh, Hazelhurst, Mississippi. Pritchard, Alabama, Pensacola, Florida. Um, you know, a lot of these towns, they really go out of their way to show their love and support. I just left um, Round Lake, Illinois, which is uh, kind of on the border between Illinois and Wisconsin. And uh, these people go ape shit, you know what I'm saying? Because nobody goes to these towns and nobody performs with these people. But I'm from a town like Round Lake. I'm from a town like Pensacola. I'm from a town like Hazelhurst. And I know how important it is for people in a community like that to get that kind of love and appreciation. Because when you go to a market like that, that's basically you acknowledging your fan base. Well, in these small towns, it's like they all have the same one outlet. Usually everybody kind of has to go to just one place for music. But you definitely get to see everybody that loves rap music. And rap music is by no means for any one race or, or, or sex or, or denomination of people. Everybody loves music. Everybody gets a chance to enjoy it. Nobody should be denied. I'm from, you know, I'm from Port Arthur, Texas, and the population of Port Arthur, Texas now is 50,000 people. So it wasn't that many people when I was growing up. And, um, you know, it's only like uh, maybe 30 minutes away from Jasper, Texas, where they drug James Byrd. It's only about 40 minutes away from Vida, Texas, which is like the, the hub for the Texas chapter of the Ku Klux Klan. Um, literally five minutes away from Port Arthur, Texas, you cross a bridge into a town called Bridge City, and there's, a, there's no minorities in that city. So, you know, you see the, 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 the Gina, Louisiana's and situations like that going on. And for, you know, somebody like myself, I was surprised that it got that much media attention because the reality is, is that these towns like Gina and Vida and Bridge City, they exist because most people don't ever go to these towns and most people don't ever be in a position to bring the attention to those towns. UGK for life, or IP Pimp C, this your boy Bum B, this much cover boy, cheese, and you're watching Accelerator TV, alright? And then you go like in Louisiana, you see a lot of old school slaughterhouses too, where there's still a lot of big hunks of meat, just saying, I don't want to gross anybody out if anybody's a vegetarian or whatever, because, you know, I've told stories like this before, people just start puking, but... And uh, uh, no offense to my vegetarians that may be watching right now that are probably gagging right now like this is two girls in a cup.